Hi, welcome to another episode of Bringing Hope to Alzheimer's. I'm Ann Frazier, and I'm sitting with my husband today. This is Mark Frazier. Hello. Thanks for being here. Well, sure. <laughs> he doesn't love this as much, but I thought it would be um, an interesting take to hear Mark's side of things. And we're excited to see just kind of through the whole journey, how you felt about things and so forth. All right? Sure. Okay. So let's go back to when my folks were diagnosed with um, Alzheimer's and dementia. And um, that whole journey during the three years that from the time they were diagnosed that we were kind of when we started caring for them and, and all of that. Just tell me, like, how did you feel during that time? It was a long three years. And from your side of things. It was a long three years. We had a lot going on because I was still working in Topeka. So I was driving back and forth from there. Mm -hmm. Our son was a junior in high school, and it was his third high school that he'd been in mm -hmm. uh, due to previous moves that we've made. Um, and we also had moved in with your folks because we knew that something was going on. We just couldn't pinpoint it. Right. So that was an additional stress, if you will, to... To actually live in your childhood bedroom was a little, <laughs> a little different. It was a little different. Um, you know, but... Uh, but our eyes were really open. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, it was a good thing that we did it. But, um, you know, I never thought I'd be down that road, but but yeah. Yeah. But we got through it. I mean, yeah. it was a little rocky, but again, it's a good thing we did. We were able to help them, um, you know, really pinpoint what was going on because they weren't able to just rise to the occasion and then after we'd leave, you know, kind of be down for a couple, three days and right. all that, which which sometimes happened when your siblings would come and yes. visit, you know, your folks would rise to the occasion and then it would be... Uh, we'd see the aftermath. Yeah, the siblings would leave and then, you know, your mom would stay in her room for two or three days. It's right. All that. So, yeah, you know... It, it was it was a challenge. It was something totally different than I had ever been used to. E either one of us, right? So we were just taking each day. <laughs> you know, whenever it came, you didn't know what the day was going to bring. So, so during that time when we had moved them, and I was spending most of my time spending the night with them, caring for them, pretty much twenty four seven, and then you would come over. Um, and you could see when I was hitting my limit, when I just needed a break. Yes. Talk about that. Yeah. So, um, well, especially when you have two. Mm -hmm. You had two, and they were kind of on two different sides, I guess, as far as personalities go. Your dad got very loving and warm and and all. And not that your mom was mean or anything, but she was just very short-tempered. Uh -huh. You know, any, anything would pretty much set her off, and she would just immediately go back to her bedroom. Uh -huh. um, you know, so it was two different that we're dealing with, so it's kind of a oh, tug and pull, uh -huh. tug and pull. And um, so, I mean, just an emotional roller coaster, which turns into a physical one, because if you're not getting enough sleep and the stress and all yeah. that, it definitely takes its toll. So it was very nice that, you know, you had quite a bit of support in place. You had, you know, Sandy would come over and and adult sit for yes. a little while. And yes. Let you get out. and Or her other two friends. Yeah. Right. You did your bodybuilding and, yeah. and things like that. So there are just ways that you do have to kind of distance yourself break. and take a little break once in a while. So. And He's a rock star, by the way, because you, I mean, you were so supportive during that time. And I remember one time when I had, I was, had had it. I, had, I was at the end of my rope. I had no patience left. And I brought, um, this was after my dad had passed. And I brought my mom over to our house. And you had called a friend up. And you said, I've got your mom tonight. You go out and... Just get away for a minute. And Google. And that was very nice. You remember I that? probably didn't do that often enough, but. No, no. It was, it, but you knew when I'd hit my limit, which was, it. I mean, I have a lot of patience, but that was, yeah, yeah it just gets difficult. Yeah. So, but and now. And I will say that our kids for the age 
that they were, mm -hmm. with Eric being a junior and then also a senior, and Kaylin, you know, kind of going through nursing school at KU and mm -hmm. all that. I mean, they helped out as well. With, they did. With, yeah, it's kind of a, it, it's a family it disease. It is a family disease. Yeah, yeah. all everybody pitches it in. It's a village. It doesn't mm -hmm. just take a... A village to raise children, it takes a, a village to help with family members that are yeah. going through this. It's true. It's true. All right. Let's fast forward to 2017 when I was diagnosed with MCI and we found out that I had the APOE4 gene. Do you remember where we were when I found out I had the gene? I don't. I probably, to be honest, have blocked that out of the Right, right, right. We were driving to um, party in the pasture. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, so... When I was diagnosed and we found out all that was kind of going on with me, tell everybody a little bit about how you were feeling about that. Well, I think initially it's it's uncertainty because I had seen what what we went through with your folks. And the question in the back of the mind is, is this really going to happen? What is the propensity? What, you know, what what can we do to try to make it not happen, mm -hmm. just all kinds of questions. Right. Did you, were you seeing things in me at that time? Well, I think when you get stressed and tired, you know, and, but a lot of times that's what people say. Mm -hmm. well, I'm just fatigued or I'm just tired or stressed, stressed mm -hmm. or, you know, whatnot. Well, and so, I mean, at this point, I know a lot of people don't want to know, but at this point, I'm glad that you do know. Because it allows us to live our lives in a different way. Because mm -hmm. it's it's a lot different than I pictured it would be. Mm -hmm. You're saying... jumping ahead in my questions, Mark. Oh, sure. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> so I'm doing, no, I'm doing okay. okay. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, no, I was just going to say, you know, it's been six years. So it's, it might be difficult to look back at six years ago, like really kind of what you were seeing. Is there anything in particular that you could see in me back then that you noticed? Because there's things I know that I remember that you probably noticed. But do you remember well, back six years ago? I think one of the biggest things, and a lot of times I would attribute it to just being married for as long as we've been married. I mean, six years ago, we would have been married 27 years. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, by that time, you can kind of start to finish your spouse's sentences and all yep. that, and so I continue to do it still this to this day, even when you're not having right. any challenges. Yeah, you know. But I, I think that's probably when I started. Was if if you would kind of get stuck, I would just either either give you a word or I would finish right the sentence. Yes, and I notice you do that a lot for me now too. <laughs> so, so again, I am attributing that go. to 33 years of marriage. So okay. So now that we've been on this journey for six years, what what are you seeing now? How are you handling things now? Because is life different now? Life is life is definitely different. Um, a lot of it for the better. I mean, I'm a lot healthier than I <laughs> yeah. used to be simply because we're eating better. We're eating less. Um, we're exercising more. I'm still probably not getting the sleep, but. Um, you know, that's kind of how that goes. Um, I would say the financial focus has changed mm -hmm. because... Expand on that. Um, well, there's a lot of supplements and obviously eating well costs more than eating right. poorly and going through fast food restaurants and all mm -hmm. that that we used to do. Mm -hmm. um, but even even things like going to the doctor and all that, there's a lot of things that... For whatever reason, the insurance company doesn't want to cover, mm -hmm. and so it's it's. Kind I don't of, want to talk about preventative health. Right. It's that's that's what I was going to say. It's kind of frustrating that they they don't really want you to be healthy, or they don't want to help you pay to be healthy. They want to wait until you're sick, and and then they'll pay to have you get better. Yeah. So it, it it's, it's I don't understand the thinking behind that, but then. Mm -hmm. that's, yep. So as we go forward, and the gala is a lot. I mean, it, it takes a lot of time. It's a big endeavor. It takes a lot of time. 
Yeah, it takes a village, right? Yeah. Um, as we go forward, how do you see things in our future as far as just like anything changing um, work-wise? What do you What do you think? Um, well, I don't know. I mean, with us both being realtors as well and having a team, we'd obviously like to see our team grow mm-hmm. um, so that we can work towards an exit strategy. Um, yeah. I just told someone earlier today that, you know, if you don't, you don't really retire from real estate, you just <laughs> you do it till you get old. I mean, it's just yeah. one of those things that you can continue to do. It's mm-hmm. not necessarily as physically challenging as uh, yeah. other jobs. But, um, you know, I, th- I think the platform that you have with the gala to spread awareness for brain health and early detection and all that, I, mm-hmm. I can see you continuing to do that. Um, to what heights? Uh, I don't know. That's kind of in God's hands as far as, as, far right. as I'm concerned. Because, okay. I mean, I don't think right now there's any limitations because there are so many people out there who either know they have this or they don't know and they do have it. Mm-hmm. And just, just the um, environmental things that are, you know, happening with food and, you know, socially, everybody wants to be active and, you know, doing things all the time that they don't rest like they should, they don't get the amount of sleep they should, and yep. there's such high stress levels, and it's just, I don't know, it's a lifestyle, and I am I think we are slowing down a little bit in that aspect, at least from, you know, Brain health. putting together a schedule yeah. that you can follow instead of everything being a fire, you the schedule, <laughs> me, so, yeah, no. the schedule that you can at least somewhat follow, right? When, when you will. So, okay. so let's. What advice do you have for other spouses that may be listening or watching that they maybe are concerned about either themselves, but they're maybe they're concerned about their spouse or a friend or a relative. What would your advice be from the side of things that you're on? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with the personality of of that person. Mm-hmm. Because, to be honest, there's probably people who could handle it better mm-hmm. than I did. There's probably people who could who can't handle it at all, and will be totally lost and floundering, and therefore the relationship will suffer as opposed to being supportive. You know. So, is that your advice to be supportive? Definitely, mm-hmm. definitely, as much as you can. And if you can't, then seek out others mm-hmm. who can help you be supportive and can come alongside you to be supportive as well. Because for one individual, which I can honestly say it wasn't just me, like I said, it was our kids, it was some of your friends. Mm-hmm. So I mean it it does take a lot of people a lot of people to help mm-hmm. be that supportive unit because right. I, I know People, and I've heard of people who spend so much time taking care of their loved ones that their own health suffers. Mm-hmm. And and then that becomes resentment. Mm-hmm. And, it again, it just tears down rather than building up. So, mm-hmm. you know, a lot, a lot of support is required for this. So, again, would you say if, if somebody sees something in their loved one, um, do you feel like it's where they just go to them and just talk to them about, you know, let's let's get things checked out, you know, how are you feeling? Well, I think you definitely have to address that right first and you have to do it in a loving way. Sure. Because you don't want to put them on the defensive and I'm, right. I'm, I'm just fine and mm-hmm. all that. So yeah, right. it's, it's all, it's like most of you think, it's how you handle the situation. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think that's what my whole message is, is early detection the earlier you start to address brain health and some of these things, uh, that pays dividends in the long run. Absolutely. If you don't say anything and you let it just keep going and going and going, then it gets worse and worse and worse. Right. So I think your advice to talk to them and 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 they could go to my website, yeah. right, the nightofhope.com, and they can get some information there and then talking with your local you know, Alzheimer's Association, but but prior to having Alzheimer's, you want to make sure that you're looking at brain health. Right. And that's kind of what 
what we've done. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah. Ours was a pretty big. I don't want to say a big 180. We've always been pretty active. Right. But eating habits changed, stress levels, you know, just being more Cogniz- fo- uh, focused and yeah. cognizant of what, what we're doing and looking ahead at the schedule rather than just letting things come and hit us like arrows. It's right. Kind of like, okay, take a step back and All right. really think what's what's most important. Right. So, Well... He has been really great. Uh, you have. He's very supportive, and and I know that I couldn't be doing all of this without your support because it is just in a lot of ways. There's a lot of things that you do that I don't think you realize that you do, but the financial piece of it is huge because it's all out of pocket. It's yeah. very expensive. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Anything else you want to say? Um, It's a journey. <laughs> I mean, it really is. I'm not saying that's a bad journey. It's, right. It's it's a journey. It's it's yeah. life. And, it is. And it's part of it. And so you just pull your boots up by the bootstraps and and keep moving forward. And I love the fact that more and more research is being done and we're finding out new things all the time, like the Amen Clinic that you yeah. went to and had your brain scans mm-hmm. done. And yes. I mean, that was, that was huge for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, it wasn't, again, it was a... A fiscal uh, hit, but at the same time, it was a lot of information. Yeah. And it gave you more peace of mind to know yeah. what was actually going on. Yeah. Because it's just, I mean, it makes sense when he says you, you can't really. You don't know. Put a label on anything until you know. Or you actually see what you're, what you're dealing with. with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, positive outlook. For sure. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, we just keep going. All right. Well, I appreciate you being here. Well, I appreciate you. Because <laughs> this is not his favorite thing. So anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. And we will talk to you next time on the next episode of Bringing Hope to Alzheimer's. Thanks.